Harry Reid has come out like a lion, and uh, he has done a very strong uh, uh, maneuver on the Senate floor, uh, and the Republicans are livid. First, let me tell you what the maneuver is, and this is going to knock your socks off. Well, what he did was uh, he forced the right uh, to force a vote on a motion to suspend the rules after cloture has been invoked on a bill to consider a non germane amendment. Got him! <laughs> now, no one understood that, right? <laughs> I had to read it like three times, like, right, cloture, right, the non germane amendment, right? Okay, I got it. <laughs> so, now the details of it aren't important. What is important is what does it do? And what it does is it allows 50 senators to basically circumvent the filibuster that if they want to. So it takes away some rights from the minority. And, and some have started to call it the nuclear option, which is what the Republicans considered. Now, is he really doing that in terms of legislation going forward, that from now on you don't need 60 votes? No, 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 he's not doing that. He did it on a very, very specific issue, and that is not that, but that later could be extended to larger issues and could be extended to take away the filibuster. Right now, so it was a step in a, in the right direction in terms of being strong and saying, "Hey, we're not going to let you uh, bully us." Right now, that's how most people are seeing it, and of course, the Republicans are very mad about it. Let me tell you about that. Here is a senior uh, se Senate Republican aide. He says, "Democrats are remarkably short-sighted. They forget they'll be in the minority someday, and we'll have to live with their rules." Now, that's actually true. I'm going to get back to that point in a second. Then John Cornyn said that this was tyranny. Tyranny. Wow, that's a strong statement. And in fact, uh, here's uh, McConnell, livid about it. In the United States Senate, the minority is entitled to be heard. Not entitled to win, but entitled to be heard. And so that's the core problem here. And I'd say to my friend, the majority leader, and this is nothing personal about it, I like him, we deal with each other every day, we are fundamentally turning the Senate into the House. No amendments before cloture, no motions to suspend after cloture, the minority is out of business. And it's particularly bad on a bill that has the support of over 60 members, as this one did. If you're not among those 60, you're out of luck. Okay, so he's saying this is taking away all the rights of the minority. How dare you? In fact, Corker doubles down on this. This is a senator from Tennessee. I really don't want to speak. Here's what I want to happen. I think members on both sides of the aisle feel like this institution has degraded into a place that is no longer a place of any deliberation at all. And I'd like for you and the minority leader to explain to us so that we have one story here in public as to what has happened this week to lead us to the place that we are. That's all I'm asking. That's all I want to know. Well, I'll tell you. What has happened to lead us to this place? Well, you guys block Every single bill. That is what has led to this place. He's like, we're having no deliberation here. Are you kidding me? All you have is so-called deliberation. Oh, no, 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 let's consider health care for another year. Oh, financial reform and implementing it. We can't implement it now. We need more deliberation. That's their whole point. And then they fake this, like, oh, outrage. It's like, oh, my God, I can't believe you did this. But now here's my secret theory about it. Look. It's interesting that Harry does this strong move on an issue that is almost irrelevant. You know what it was specifically on? Whether McConnell was going to get a vote on the whole jobs bill on Obama or Reid was going to get a vote on some portion of the jobs bill. So it wasn't based on what's going to pass, because all of this is going to go to the House and none of it's going to pass, right? It was on who can blame one another and, uh, and, and play these political games. This is not that important an issue. So why did he do? that kind of nuclear option on a totally irrelevant issue, especially as we're headed into an election where the Democrats might lose their tiny majority in the Senate, because there's so many more Democrats up for re-election than Republicans. Well, I think that's why he did it. Now, I know that this will be controversial, especially among Democrats, but I think the Democrats are here to throw the game. So this is a perfect way to throw the game. Now, think about it. If he could have done this and gotten past the filibuster, my God, why didn't he do it in the beginning? Why wait till the very end and do it on something entirely irrelevant? Why didn't he do it right in the beginning for health care? Why didn't we get the public option with that? Why didn't we do fi much stronger financial reform? Why didn't we get the DREAM Act? Why didn't we get all these things that they claimed they were in favor of if all Harry Reid had to do was this legislative maneuver? 
Why do they wait till the very end, just as, about, as they're about to possibly become the minor, minority party in the Senate? Because that's how the game is rigged. And then the Republicans will come, and they will use it on every major piece of legislation. If they grab the majority, they'll be like, oh, what can I do? You remember that quote I just showed you? Uh, it was their idea, and it was their leaders that brought you this. So there you go. What can we do? They used it on an entirely irrelevant thing at the very end of their run, uh, but we're going to use it on every relevant piece of legislation to give the rich even bigger breaks. That's what I think is going on here. So this was you know, the, the Washington generals doing a slight trick to the Harlem Globetrotters, so then the Globetrotters in the next uh, set of plays will dunk it over their head. Why do it now? It doesn't make any sense. That's why they do it now. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think Harry Reid secretly goes and tells McConnell, this is our plan on throwing the game. I think the system has selected pathetically weak Democrats to do exactly as their donors tell them to do. So the donors in subtle ways tell Harry Reid, Harry, this is your time to be strong. Yeah, go ahead and do this legislative maneuver. Uh, that'll show the Republicans. He's like, oh, really? Okay. Oh, I got him. And then he comes out, he says this. Look at this. Look at this line. Go to Harry Reid. I found over the last uh, Congress and nine months that when I try to have an open amendment process, it is a um, road to nowhere. It just it hasn't worked. We haven't, uh, we haven't been able to effectuate a single bill being passed that way. Regardless of whether that's right or wrong, that's what I did. We should be able to move matters through here that have been happened for, since the beginning of this country. Nominations, for example. We can't do that because my friend, the Republic leader, as candid as he was, said his number one goal is to defeat President Obama. And that's what's been going on for nine months here. And this issue relating to these dilatory tactics on these motions to uh, suspend the rules is just part of that game that's been played. Let's get back. I agree. I agree. Let's get back to legislating as we did before the mantra around here was defeat Obama. <laughs> all right. All right, Harry. I got you, man. Take it easy. You see what the system produces? It produces Democrats like this. And it produces Republicans that then come over the top and say, tyranny, how dare you, we're so upset. And it also, by the way, produces corporate robot media, which I'm gonna to get to in a second. The whole game is rigged so Republicans win, Democrats lose, but much more importantly, so that progressives lose and the rich and the powerful win.